So here, we're going to go live. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of TJ, episode number 173, live at Crypto Mondays, and we are with some interesting people today. Hi, what is your name? Hi, my name's Chloe. Chloe, and you're not in Web3, or are you in Web3? Not yet, but I will be soon. I bet you already are, if you have a Coinbase account. Right, that's true. Do you have a MetaMask? I don't even know what that is. What is that? It's a it's a personal wallet. Your keys, your crypto. Okay. So I think you have here an amazing person who can help you learn what MetaMask is. Just remember, never give out your seed phrase. Okay. It's like rule number one because it's like access to all your money. Okay, good right. to know. And so you have a Coinbase account. What have you done in your Coinbase account? So I did invest way back when and I sold very quickly but do you have any advice for me as I reopen my Coinbase uh what did you buy I bought Ethereum uh well ETH is always a good buy <laughs> um me personally I would say DOT is a very good standard polka dot okay. you know who who hates po pink polka dots do, do you hate pink polka dots no of course not I love polka dots <laughs> yes all right and then um also Solana what was that called? Solana. Have you heard of Solana? No, I haven't. Do you live here in New York? I do. Do you have a New York residence ID? Yes. Okay, then you can't do crypto.com. I'm sorry. You're not. You're too good. They don't want to pay for a bit license. Oh, okay. Because New York made it impossible for anyone because people have to pay up the yin-yang for zero regulation. Oh, my goodness. Um, so if you're ever free, you guys should go to uh, Hudson Yards, okay. you know, the big mall, and go yeah. to Solana Spaces. And you'll get a you'll be able to get a phantom wallet, which is like MetaMask. MetaMask is for Ethereum-based projects. The phantom wallet is for Solana-based projects. Not compatible, but semi-compatible via a bridge. But they'll teach you about it. They'll onboard you to download some free NFTs. You know what an NFT is? I sure do. What does it stand for? Non-fungible token. Okay, good. I thought you were gonna say non-functioning testicles, but that is neither here nor there. Um, but no, you get some free NFTs, and you do a few of them and learn about the ecosystem, they pay you 10 bucks. Wow, all right, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> what is your name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Okay, Jeremy, we have to speak a little louder because we are in a loud bar. All right, all right, I can do that. Don't, don't be showed up by Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing, Web3? Uh, I'm uh, yield farming and uh, decentralized finance and a bit of NFTs as well. What is your favorite DeFi yield farming strategy right now? Ooh, uh, Strategy or protocol? Protocol first. Uh, I'd say right now Camelot on Arbitrum. Okay. Yeah. All right. Arbitrum. We got some Arbitrum people here to talk to. Some Arby's. Do you have your Arby? Uh, Arby? ID? No, I do. Oh, I have Magic. The uh, the Magic ID? No, I dropped my Arby. Our the Arbitrum ID? No. Okay, that's a problem. All right. <laughs> no. Hey, no, it's not. Arbitrum's good. Um, Snapfish. Do you know that protocol? No, I do not. Another DeFi protocol. Okay, yes. Uh, what about BP Finance? Of course, of course yes. What do you know about? A uh, BP? He's where he got BP. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, what is your token the DeFi pool right now earning yield? What's your What's your APY or APR? Uh, I like the, there's an Oath uh, Ethereum farm on Camelot that has 100, 150% in uh, the Grail token on uh, Camelot. All right. Is it uh, uh, um, incentivized pool right now? It is, yes. So are you taking that incentivization and cashing it out and or recompounding it back in? Recompounding, always. <laughs> okay, nice. We have a believer. We have a believer. You have a believer in the grail. All right, so uh, where? What is, do you know that website off the top of your head? Oh, uh, uh, Camelot, I'm not sure. I would... Find him on Twitter. Yeah, absolutely, yep. Always be safe on the links that you go through. All right. So, what's your favorite DeFi strategy? Um, well, strategy finding the highest yield, finding tokens that I that I think have potential, and then finding the best way to earn more yield on them. Yeah. Do you do anything on Moonbeam? I do not. Which... We we've talked about Moonbeam before and Stella Swap. Do you not like the decks? Oh, I know. I have the biggest decks. I have the biggest decks. So he doesn't. He doesn't like my decks. Wow, man! Just don't tell her about sexes. Why are we throwing you under the bus with with different acronyms and the ABC? 
All right. So I said DEX, D E X, decentralized exchange. Okay. You guess what a sex is? Oh, centralized exchange. Yes. <laughs> we have a winner. All right. She is going to make it. Do you know what wag me means? No. <laughs> what do you think wag me means? I have no idea. W A G M I. Oh, <laughs> got it. What do you think? We're all going to make it. All right. She's going to make it. Nag me. What was that? Nag me. N-A-G-M-I? No. Not going to make it. <laughs> I think you're going to make it, though. So wag me. All right. It was an honor meeting you. I know you guys are out the door. Dude, always a great. And you're gonna be at East Denver? Uh, potentially. All right, we're gonna we're gonna have another connection. We're gonna have another live Taco Bites in Denver. We will see you on the flip side. Uh, what did you like about Crypto Monday to so far tonight? Ah, uh, the speakers were great. Yeah, yeah. Who did you like listening to the most? Oh, the guy from Masari. It was really interesting. I didn't get his name, but yeah. Yeah, Masari always. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful night. It was great meeting you. All right. Bye. And as we move on to our next DJs, we're going to have a little bit of fun here. Uh, we have Shane. Well, wait, no. Let's let's call him John. And let's. Are you Docs? No. What? You can call. You can call me Blockchain. Blockchain. That's my. Uh, that's okay. my my Web three persona. Can we talk about what you do? Yeah. So I um, I uh, lead a business development at Consensus. I predominantly focus on uh, Infura, which is. So essentially, I work with a lot of DeFi protocols and NFT projects who are essentially looking to kind of, you know, go from self-hosting their own node to, you know, working with a node infrastructure as a service platform um, like Infura. So I get a good sense of, you know, what's kind of going on in the DeFi space, uh, what people are working on, um, as well as kind of, you know, working with some cool um, NFT projects that are looking to, you know, work, work with us. Nice. Um, and so one of the things then that, you know, people always have this idea against Infura as being, you know, an overlord of collecting data. What do you what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So uh, like we definitely understand the uh, decentralized ethos of working in Web3. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, like we want to make sure that these projects have the capacity to you know, deliver a system that's working for their users. So. Um, you know, we, we're happy to kind of step in, um, you know, and kind of serve as that infrastructure layer. Um, but we also totally respect if people want to, you know, use us as a backup provider where they're running their own nodes and then maybe default to us if there's a system outage. So we definitely respect the ethos of, of you know, decent, DeFi, decentralization uh, in, in Web3. Nice. Um, so then, because uh, it, it's sort of, there's a funny meme going around and, this is why I feel that Infura has a strong place in uh, Web3 right now is because you're, you're opting for what, really? Decentralized, stable network. Infura, Blockdamian, Rivet, and then you have maybe a few other providers, and then you have AWS. And what I really love uh, is the meme of like Jeff Bezos. He's like, your decentralized network runs on my network. <laughs> what do you think of that? Um... Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, it has its place in tech history. Um, but, you know, on the other side, you know, with, with Infira, we are, you know, essentially kind of carving out a new entire industry. Um, and, you know, we're built with decentralized de decentralization as, you know, a starting point. So with AWS, you know, building AWS with a proxy for considering decentralization being the ultimate goal, whereas products like Infura... You know, we're go we're going into a market where we understand decentralization is a component of of what we're striving for. Um, so we definitely have, I would say, a lot more thought in terms of people who are working at more traditional Web two hosting services, where we have we have people who are thinking of, thinking about decentralization in terms of node infrastructure. Like, you know, we like we we understand where where, where we're playing in and the, the market we're playing in as well. So what, what do you think is the overlying purpose that Consensus is trying, you know, 
talk about, let's talk about consensus for a minute. You know, it, it was split off. Do you want to give the, a quick history of consensus? Um, so, to be honest, I joined consensus a month ago. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Wouldn't be the the best person to maybe. Get in you in your opinion, what is what is what is the what has been the offshoot and purpose of consensus, and what is the meaning behind the name for those that are listening that might not know? Yeah, so consensus essentially, you know, the name consensus meaning the consensus mechanism that is used to obviously confirm transactions on the blockchain. Um, but yeah, the history of consensus started by Scott and Joseph Lubin, um, who was one of the co-founders of Ethereum. Um, one of the most predominant products that he ended up um, kind of bringing into a consensus, kind of falling underneath the consensus arm, was a wallet called MetaMask, which I'm sure many of your listeners are familiar with. Um, and MetaMask has, you know, done a great way of, you know, circumventing maybe traditional on-ramps into crypto uh, instead of you know, maybe buying crypto through centralized exchange like FTX. You know, MetaMask can kind of be that you know, real custodial service for kind of onboarding the next generation of people into crypto. Um, but yeah, our two main products are MetaMask uh, and then Infura, which I mentioned before, is our node as the infrastructure uh, offer. So uh, Consensus is a huge conference as well. When is the next Consensus? Um, I actually have no idea. <laughs> Hold on. I, we'll find out for, just for people that know because I think uh, I uh, was looking at tickets uh, the other day. Do you have desk token? Yes, token. I do not. You don't have desk. The consensus token. As I said, I joined a month ago. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's see here. Quantum. It's coming up in June. I want to say. Let's say June. I think that's in June. Let's let's double check that. You know, double check that because uh, we want to make sure we know when we need to be in Austin. Consensus. So yeah. Oh, uh, do 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 do. do. Oh. Uh, ah, we will find out. We'll post that in the comments. Um, are you gonna be? Th are you gonna be in consensus? Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. Nice. I gotta figure out what to do. I'll be there. All right. <laughs> Uh, so what was one of the things, what were you doing before Consensus? Yeah, so I was like an NFT degen before Consensus, so, kind of, and I'm still an NFT degen, so I do a lot of NFT collecting, a lot of NFT art collecting, um, you know, joined Clubhouse really early on, saw people like Beeple, Flocious, Mad Dog Jones, uh, Exulo, uh, Medved, just a bunch of cool NFT artists and NFT pioneers, Blau as well. Can I get their start? Love Blau. So yeah, Blau. Shout, shout out to Justin. So yeah, he actually did a um, an open edition drop. I think um, last week on Manifold. So he basically did like a ten minute drop. Anyone who, who was on Manifold can mint any of the NFTs. But yeah, from there, like I used collecting a NFT gateway, moved to OpenSea, uh, minted a bunch of shit, uh, hit a few cool few projects, and um, yeah, now I'm kind of shifting more of my time. In terms of looking for cool, uh, like one-on-one NFT artists, and kind of ideally, everyone everyone wants to find the next people, but in order to do that, you got to start minting a lot of NFT artworks from a lot of NFT artists. Can I give you two artists? Uh, Annie Lynx and Chris Vaughn. All right, I, uh, I know Chris Vaughn. I know Manny. Um, I got to be uh, I got to be uh, I was brought up on the stage for an awesome space by Camp Kilmer. Val Kilmer's space, uh, art project, uh, supporting artists, and Manny Links I've met back in Vegas, and, and like he got he's the highlight. He's been doing this for 20 years, and last you know couple of years in the NFT space, he launched his seeds project last night, um, and so planting seeds. So, uh, and Chris Vaughn's been doing this for a while. Not only is he an artist, but he's a coder as well. So the latest NFT project was Source Code, where the NFT changes over time based on the code and on the hex on the hash of uh, your NFT uh, proof. And so, yeah. Um, so, what's your favorite chain right now? Ethereum. All right. All right. All right. Any any layer twos? Uh, yeah, Polygon. Um, Optimism. Arbitrum. Um, I'm definitely, like, 
slowly kind of exploring the DeFi ecosystem in Arbitrum as well. Um, I think the total value lock on Arbitrum's chain is like a billion. Uh, and I would say, I think 40% of that's in DeFi protocols. So yeah, definitely want to start exploring, you know, you mentioned like Beefy, Beefy Finance. Uh, I've been looking into like shell protocol as well. Um, but yeah, I think there's uh, there's a lot of cool innovation going on, especially specifically on like layer two networks. Nice. Uh, what about Polkadot? Polkadot. Uh, yeah, I'm open to it. I haven't I haven't downloaded a, the equivalent of a Polkadot MetaMask wallet, but uh, yeah, I'm I am chain agnostic. Like I I don't discriminate against chains. Um, I just see them as networks of value. So. Yeah, always open to other ecosystems. E easiest, easiest start that you can start with is your MetaMask. You can come over to Moonbeam, first mainnet parachain of Polkadot, uh, EVM compatible, and you can then use like a Node.js, uh, or not a Node, but Polkadot.js wallet uh, or Fearless wallet to, to get into the rest of the Polkadot ecosystem. Okay. Uh, but Moonbeam is EVM compatible, and you can check out our next Teleswap. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I'll check that out. Uh, yes, that was a selfless shale. So, uh, what brought you into crypto? What brought me into crypto? Um, I would say the ethos. Um, you know, someone who kind of understood the TradFi world. Didn't really see, maybe in 2008, there really weren't many alternatives. And DeFi really did present an alternative way of thinking about, you know, trust, transparency, and money. Um, so, I just thought a lot of the old systems were archaic. Needing, needing disruption and crypto is definitely that that uh, that, that haven. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so, how long ago did you get into crypto? I got into crypto in 2020. All right, cool, awesome. Well, also, no, I got into crypto in let's say 20 2017. Bought a little Bitcoin, ordered up to 20k, dismissed the technology, and then I got back into it in, in like 2019, 2020. Um, okay. But my my uh, re-entry into it was NFTs. All right. Awesome. Yeah. No. Uh, what's what? What's one? So, take blue chips off the table. What's your favorite NFT right now? Okay. Yeah. I just mentioned this like a week ago. Come here. We have we have someone else to join up this conversation as well as as we hunt on an NFT. What's your name? My name is Surya. All right. And are and do you like finding you on Twitter or no? Yeah, I do. Lo I do love it. What I is it? What is great. what is what is your what is your name on Twitter? My name on Twitter is just my full name. Uh, S-U-R-Y-A-B-A-K-S-H-I. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I could be wrong. Yeah, that's what it is. All right. Nice. And what do you do? I am a research scientist at Arbitrum. I'm also currently getting my PhD, and I do, like, I've been doing crypto work for a long time now. Nice. And when you say long time, do we want to count fingers between you and me to see who has more? So I began working on crypto stuff in 2016. 2012. Damn, that's wild. Yeah. Like in uh, on what? On like Bitcoin. On Bitcoin. Yeah. Mining Bitcoin partitioned half the hard drives in my computer lab into mid miners when you could do CPU mining. So you're loaded, basically. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about a story where I threw away 60 <laughs> Bitcoin. So, what was that NFT yes. blockchain? This NFT I minted a week ago was called Slices of Cake. Oh my god, that literally looks like my NFT project. Really? So it's like a 10-hour free mint project where the cake turns into crumbs in the last two hours of mint. So can, I, can, I, can I take a picture of that? Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. That sort of looks like my NFT project. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, and so if someone wanted to check that out, where could they find info on it? Uh, Gallery.so slash blockchain. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, what's uh, what's the what's the worst thing you minted in 2022? In 2022, um, there's a lot, man. <laughs> I will. I will. The, everyone that listen, everyone that has listened to this show more more than once, and we have had this question. The, I will. I will set the tone of how horrible the thing I minted. I minted pixelated sperm. Yeah, I um, I think the worst thing I mentioned wasn't in 2022, but it was a project called uh, Misfits University. Okay. So essentially, the let's just say the reveal wasn't the most appropriate art. Um, and I mean, it's definitely a topic of contention, like back in 
Yeah. You probably, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Yeah, I remember that 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 one. That was uh, <laughs> almost as good as uh, what was that? Uh, what was that block game animal that like minted last year and then revealed? What Kevin? Not Kevin Rose thing. The the green little. Yeah, it's yeah, it called Kevin. The Kevin, yeah. Um, what what was the funnest thing you minted last year? Funnest thing I minted? Uh, I enjoyed Pack. So yeah. it is a live recording. Do you want to join? I don't know. What is Anonymously. Your name? Anonymous. <laughs> we have Mr. Anonymous here, and we will not tell you that he has a beard. And he might look like the only person that stands out the most on Guess Who. Oh, that's good. That's a fucking good game. No glasses. No glasses. But there's only one person that doesn't have. But he doesn't have a beard. But he's the only person that doesn't have that. Right. Right. You're better at Guess Who than me. I only know that one. You, you ask me anything else, I'm like, yeah, no. I'm worth That's a but. So. Uh, we're going around a little, talking a little bit about NFTs, DeFi, blockchain, the whole gamut of DGen. And we were just talking about what was the funnest community project you minted last year? Uh, I said uh, PAC. Even though the price is tanked, I thought it was a cool project. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the fungible? Fun the fungible ones. All right. Not the refungibles that came out as like derivative, but just fungibles. All right. Cool. And what was it that you liked about the community? Uh, just like the, um, the, the conversations, um, it's really good in project, uh, and people weren't talking about floor price the whole time. So they're just talking about, the All right. um, what was the biggest thing you learned in 2022? Uh, don't follow the hype. Um, and, um, uh, take profits, <laughs> take profits. You, I came up with a new, so everyone has FOMO. I came out with Romo relief of missing out. Totally All right. Yeah. What was the biggest thing you learned in 2022? The biggest thing I learned was I actually I'm actually taking the opposite take on FTX and all that. I'm taking the opposite take that I actually think that custodial key custodial key management is actually the way for me. Because no everyone says you know not your not your key not your coins. I say not my keys, not my problem. So I actively think that I will definitely lose my keys. I don't trust myself. I trust the legal infrastructure of the United States to maybe help Coinbase get my money back if they collapse. It won't, I don't think so. But what about distributed keys? Well, 2, 2FA, phone number, email, a little bit of distribution that way. I would say there is. Uh, there are a few people like I would trust to like have sort of, you know, like some multi-sig with, and they are like quite crypto-heavy people. So I could do that. That is a good option, but I just, I'm just, I just know myself. I, my lack of discipline. Actually, I think a lot of people are probably like this, and so they don't trust themselves to secure their money. I definitely don't. So like, even if I did a, a multi, even if I did everything cryptographic, cryptographic correct, I would still be thinking day and night. Oh my God, you know, I got, I can't lose. I can't lose this, and you know, I'll take care of it now. yeah. And that's that, that is that is one of those things where it's a very easy on ramping solution, you know. Like, look at you know, Nifty, let's look at Cupcake. You know, they hold on to these items through like magic links that you can then claim at a later date. But you know, not my keys, not my problem is a very good way, you know, because one, you, know, you just hope that there's solvency and that there's a risk. But with regulation, I do believe regulation is appropriate and is needed, but not censorship. Yeah. I agree completely. Like I think this whole like uh, you know the OFAC drama with with fast bots, you know, they chose now to sort of to, to censor transactions for OFAC countries, and I completely support that. I think you yours as a crypto project priority number one, don't go to jail. Like above anything else, you know, fuck talking about decentralization. You know, like you know, just, just don't do shady shit. Just don't go to jail. Avoid jail time and then do step two. You know what don't I mean? do shady shit. Exactly. So if everyone's saying, oh, you know, flash bots and relays are now, are now censoring me on your own relay, like, you know, do your own thing. You know, like, you take up the ball, ball, like, say, you know, fuck you to the government if you have the ball to do it. You know, don't get mad because someone else doesn't want, doesn't want to go to jail. 
I, uh, that was kind of sort of off on a tangent, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there was a recent report that um, after OPEC's major policy of censorship, that there was a, a close to 70% of uh, nodes providing that censorship that was going on on chain. But now it's now about 60% going down on, on the, the regulatory compliance. Not Whether we look at it as compliance, but there's really no regulatory piece. It's just someone saying, hey, you need to censor this and, you know, blacklist. You think, And that there's only 60% of the nodes doing that. I wonder how many of those nodes are, are in the... United States versus like abroad because I know, for example, the Trinidad people who were arrested not in America, they were arrested in the Netherlands, I believe. One person. One person, and so I mean, like, God bless this guy. But anyway, I'm I'm curious how many of those are in the U.S. because I would I would say if you're validated in the U.S., I I think it's just a bad idea to like you know test the government on this. Like as much as I believe in decentralization, anti censorship. You know, you can't really contribute to this whole decentralization effort if you're in jail, right? Like, it, that's the bottom line. Unless you're writing code out on, like, paper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, I mean, you know, in my jail cell, like, you know, handing it to you, like, I, you know. like Mail it out and have yeah. people scan it in. Yeah, exactly. That's completely, that's a garbage reasoning talking about anti-censorship. Like, don't go to jail and then, do, and then do something cool with that time. Yeah. Yeah. So what's one of the largest biggest things you learned in 2022 that you could pass on to others? I, I actually think that don't trust whenever you see traditional traditional finance knowledge jumping on a crypto project, chances are, or, or no, actually I'll say don't don't trust that more than like any other DeFi project because TradFi, as we've seen clearly, has no idea what the fuck they're talking about, right? Like they will support anything that looks okay because they don't fundamentally get what the hell is going on. So don't use, you know, trad by influencers, famous people as someone as like a hallmark for, oh, Kevin O'Leary said this is good. That's why I should trust him because he because he makes money, right? Like, like don't I, trust trad by, basically. Funny story. I could say I'm technic. I was Kevin O'Leary's boss for a moment because he used to do cameo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I made him make a video. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I made Kevin O'Leary do something. For not a lot of money. I would offer him. I would have everybody spam his cameo. Asking him to say sorry for FTX. That's what I want everyone to spam his cameo. Eventually he'll be like. There's a hundred grand riding on me saying. You know there's a million dollars riding on me. Saying I'm sorry on cameo. Maybe I'll do it. So maybe if we spam everyone. Spams enough money. I think we'll I'm, I, I think I'm going to do. I'm going to make that happen. Yeah. Just for the fuck of it. I do dumb shit like that. Yeah, exactly. So just for the hell of it. I will. I will. I will get that together. I will let you know, and we will make this. And do we have? Yeah, I'll retweet it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll support it. Yes. All right, and we'll do the crowdsourcing. Hopefully, we don't get censored. I'm sorry, Dow, man. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin O'Leary, I'm sorry, Dow. <laughs> um, and that's how great projects are born. Um, and, oh, my gosh. Um, there was something that you had said, and now I'm totally, oh, my gosh, that was Amazing. So, what was one of the best things that you that you saw come out in 2022? The best thing I saw come out, um, Uniswap V3. I think concentrated liquidity. I think Uniswap V3 is the fucking shit. I think it's amazing. I don't know if you like if you can curse on your thing or whatever, but but yeah, I think Uniswap V3 is fantastic. Like that, and you know, they and Tyroscope, I believe, Tyroscope announced a lot of new stablecoin. Protocols. I think their their most stable coin is like so mathematically sound. I'm just, I just I just really love the team. All right. So, what is your thought then to peg stable coins? My thought to peg stable coins. So I think the like key like innovation of Terra has been their like they their new redemption curve, and so I think their redemption curve of how like if you um I think their redemption curve. I think I saw a new curve, like a ZYX curve, that I have to dive on, but it was a new curve formula that came out. Do you that, know what I'm talking about? That, that, I think that might be what you're thinking of. Yeah, they they actually, okay, so it's not 2022 technically, it's like January like 5th or something, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Close but it was, it was formulated in 2022. Exactly, they were working on it all year. And I, so I think like that is 
Can I tell you about a new 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 uh, concentrated liquidity pool? We got one now. We're calling it Pulsar on Moonbeam on Stella Swap. So we have it's concentrated liquidity, so that tight trading pair. So and we're going to be going with some borrowing lending through Moonwell. Shout out to Moonwell. Um, but yeah, no, I, I believe concentrated liquidity or whirlpools or whatever you want to call them, V3 forks. You know, I think they they give a user better price. What do you think about one inch? One inch? Um, I don't know what I think about one inch. I don't have enough. Stock. So one of the protocols that they came out with is called Rabbit Hole. Yeah. It's not a shielded meme pool. It is a pipeline so that the mempool is a pipeline. So there's no MEV. That's on MEV. It's a pipeline. So it's like, so once you're in line, you can't get, no one can pay to get front run. So you don't have to worry about sandwich attacks. So it sounds like Arbitrum right now, you submit a transaction to your sequencer. He gives you a, a, a transaction number basically. And the data gives you a, a final ordering among all transactions. Okay. So you're saying they have this pipeline that's off chain and the, it goes. The, I, I haven't deep dived into the pipeline to see if it, it's basically on chain. And we have a great stranger. I'm going to be here. You're going to come on radio? On, we're live. All right. Um, so basically, all transactions are on chain and in, they cannot be rearranged. Interesting. That's okay. Get rid of front, front running sandwich attacks. I'd be interested to see how that happens. Now, I, actually, so like, I, I was at this uh, research retreat in uh, in late January in Switzerland, actually. And so there, someone, uh, I think, uh, what's his name, uh, from the Ethereum Foundation, Arnabe, I think his name is, and he's and he brought up an interesting point where some forms, some forms of MEV are actually sort of advantageous to the market, right? Because like it solves some sort of coordination problem that otherwise is unsolved, right? So like a more efficient market overall. So there is such a thing I think as MEV, right? Like 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 for example, if you back run a transaction, right? Say make a trade you back run it and you get like a good a good price to sell basically i buy you sell i sell you buy it's a price correction but it's good for the market so you get like pricing. sort of like how but that like cow swap solves that with their batch batch stuff buys almost in a way and and, they, and the, the, the 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 nodes or the validators are rewarded for providing the best price not the worst price so or I the best yeah, like I think this patch auction solution MEV has been around for a while. Um, I do think that is probably like the the superior way to solve the MEV. It seems like you know the least because this whole this whole idea of like of fair ordering, fair sequencing, to me, like what do you mean by you know like this this idea of being fair as being the first one to like you know reach transaction to a sequencer kind of is garbage. I'm not. I'm not convinced it is fair yet, but um, yeah. Do like you think I, paying more gas makes it more fair, or do you think that you know, like if I see it first, but someone has that faster connection yeah. and sees what I'm doing, and they want to make a play before me? Yes. Yeah. So I would say that you want a combination of being the f the first transaction received, along with maybe maybe a bid, right? Because and the reasoning is as follows. Right? But if it's, if it's only on whoever got your transaction first, right? You get back to the high frequency trading latency wars where I want to be in the same data center as a sequencer or with as many sequencers as possible. So I'll, I'll pay that money exogenously to like be in that data center and get the lowest late latency time. What you want to do. Run, run your own validator? <laughs> well, I mean, so, so for, I don't know, you want to, you know, have as small a connection to as many of them as you can. So, like, even if you have your own validator, you'll only, you know, like, win, like, the block race every now and then. But, yeah, I mean, like, an arbitrum, right? Like, the, the, the goal there is to sort of how can you minimize the, like, the actual need to, like, co-locate and allow maybe someone to, like, submit a bid, for example, to, like, say, okay, you know, for like a one second, you know, like I want to be first. I want to be, 
I want to be 0.1 seconds, 0.2 seconds. So to avoid that cost of co-locating and getting a centralizing advantage on the network. So then I guess then the question then comes into play is, you know, the whole idea of gas fees bribes, yeah. you know, because it wasn't made that way originally, you know, but then like, you know, to secure the network or incentivize people to secure the network. So then here comes a question. Proof of stake or proof of work? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, or proof of history. Well, not proof of history. But my so I know there is a lot of work around proof of stake that does say that, you know, proof of stake is actually a strong centralizing force on sort of, you know, I think it's called, um, I think it's a work by Sarah M M Michael John that talks about, I'm sorry, by Julia Fanti that talks about sort of how proof stake encourages centralization of stake over time. And then you get only a few validators. So like I haven't looked into that as closely as I should. But so so I would say I'm unsure which one is superior. Like I think, you know, ignoring any questions about like economic, environmental impact, climate change, all that, I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. So we'll we'll proof of work first. Let's yeah. talk proof of work. Yeah. This is one of those things to where I believe in proof of work. I believe, like I believe, yeah. believe in proof of history. I even believe in Hedera's gossip, about, gossip about gossip. Yeah. You know, um, but you know, and then even some of the stuff that Hyperledger is doing. You know, and and their validation sequences. Yeah, Hyperledger. Let's talk. We'll, we'll talk about Hyperledger in a second. You know Hyperledger. Okay. I haven't heard about it. I haven't talked about Hyperledger in years. <laughs> it's still active. I'm, oh, I'm, I love Hyperledger. Um, so uh, I think one of the things where, you know, people always talk about with a 5150, yeah. really, you don't need to have control. But with a proof of stake, for half the, a, a quarter of the cost, if you provided incentives for people to stake, you could then t potentially take over the network. Like you said, the centralization. Yeah. I mean, the bribe is always there, right? Like, like, so, like, it is a central question, basically, on how much stake per validator is enough stake, right? At that, I find so hard to, like, quantify because you can't really, it's hard to reason about, you know, like, how much of a bribe is sort of feasible or reasonable to expect, right? Like, even with proof of, of work, right? Like, if you're working against nation state adversaries if the government really wanted proof of work proof of stake they could dominate the pool of miners or validators and take over the network right like proof of work they could set up a mining rig tomorrow that would be that would have a majority of the, of the hash power right proof of stake, they could they could purchase enough ethereum over the course of a year to like to to get a majority validator stake and so i just think that well, people have tried with proof of work to set up those infrastructure pieces and network them into cloud computing. The most that they were able to do was front run by 10 seconds. And so I don't think that there's the financial viability, but if we were talking, you brought economic or like energy consumption into it. And that's the thing that people tried to use as a, to backdoor that proof of work was bad. Yeah. And, but really you, if you think of it from a miner's perspective, a miner wants the cheapest electricity possible. Yeah. I know miners, a lot of miners that were doing like solar, they were doing, you know, renewables and stuff like that. Yeah. So they could get that. They could only mine for certain amounts of time, you know, yeah. because of those variables, but they were like a lot of large industries were providing short term, you know, hash power yeah. that, you know, because they wanted the cheapest electricity possible. And I feel that like people like hash power is very easy to compute the math, electricity of yeah, the yeah, cost. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, so people all then like gauge it on what's the average cost of electricity where I'm at, where other people are at. It's cheaper. However, my argument against that is right. So some countries I can imagine, right. The government, if the, if you imagine you start a mining operation, you say, you know, the, all the excess heat I generate, I'll use that for some, you know, public good work right now it's hard to gauge how much of a of an incentive or subsidy they're getting for example from their home from their home home country to like set up a mining operation to make coins to like you know to use their power grid right so it's hard to gauge all these like discounts across the world that are tied to the cost of, uh, cost of like or what they're right? providing to the infrastructure themselves i know a mining operation that 
that help fund uh, dam for farmers exactly. and provide and then hydroelectric. You know, yeah. they they and then the, the they only got a pittance of the power. That's all they needed to then refund the cost of them putting the money up front to build this dam that this infrastructure was needed. You know, and they're looking at the long term plan of that. And there's an argument there about you know like uh, that that Bitcoin mining around the world creates a demand for more energy production. And so, you know, like the the broader community around you, you know, can take advantage of the new sort of power, like you're saying, a dam or like you know, creating wind farms, solar farms, and all the extra energy I can give to like you know the people around who live around me. But I'm still I'm still unconvinced that. That the cost of like of attacking it is as is like is more is more easily computable than it is on Ethereum right now, okay. because uh, on Ethereum right like and we have the Shanghai update coming out soon hopefully, testnet was just released on one of them. But see like you know everyone says hopefully like after ETH 2.0 after the merge, they got it in the bag like you know what they're doing like I think it'll be. Yeah, it's, they're doing it in steps, clean steps. You know, there's a talk of like if that fails, then like you know, um, it could hurt the market. But like you say, I think after the merge, you know, took that long because the merge has been around, coming since 2018. You know, so it's been a moment. Uh, oh yeah, they are always great. Oh man, Vitalik. Sorry about the name. Um. Uh. I, yeah. No, there was a. a a Vitalik Italic uh, meme that I loved, you oh, know. I saw, I saw yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, I've gotten to meet him a couple times. And I know his mom, so pretty amazing individual. Um, story. I, I took a picture of me, me and him. Uh, yes, we. Yeah, no, and Gavin Wood too with Chess. Uh, but uh, so I took a picture of me and him uh, in Amsterdam, and I put that as my Tinder profile. And then I went to my next conference and I forgot that my Tinder profile was up and I had a whole bunch of people DMing me. Oh, <laughs> and that's yeah, cool. I should take a, I should take my photo with all my crypto friends and, and like take advantage of the club. <laughs> oh, <I think> <laughs> cool. Well, they thought they oh, thought I was cool. Vitalik. Oh, uh, you know, they because they they didn't go deeper into the photos and realize the rest of them were just me degening in different parts of the world. Dude, I could imagine like like the 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 line of cloud in my photo right now. That'd be amazing. Oh yeah. So, what is the biggest thing that you're looking forward to in 2023? Oh, that's a good question. I'm wondering what I can talk about and can't talk about because of where I work. So, what should someone do on Arbitrum right now? You should learn how to use Arbitrum. Everyone should learn how to deploy. Where do they Where do they go to learn about Odyssey? So the Arbitrum. So Arbitrum has done really well. Is documentation, tutorials, and ease of use. If you just go on their website, click on docs, you will not have an easier time deploying a contract on L2, making transactions, on a node, like, it'll be trivial. Well, no, like, so the Odyssey piece yeah. that, that Arbitrum has, what do you think of that? Uh, <laughs> Did you think it was a, it's a good tutorial for new, new people? I think I think I, so. So when I joined Arbitrum, I actually did use the Odyssey tutorial. I think it's great. Okay. I had a great time using it. I, it's hard to come across good tutorials in the space. I think Optimism sort of followed suit too with one as well. MetaMask Learn. Yeah. Yeah. MetaMask Learn, and then um, I I turn how I get a lot of new people into crypto. I, you know, I sometimes benefit from it if they use my referral link, but they'll usually just go to the app store and download Coinbase and learn and earn Coinbase. It's, and Coinbase has really stepped their game up. It used to be like such an easy, like you watch a one minute video and the answers were like uh, war, crypto, squirrel, chainsaw. So you could do pretty easy, but they made them a little bit harder. But what's really cool is I like that now they added learn more docs at the end. You know, so you earn free crypto. You don't have to put a dollar into it. You just have to KYC, you know, um, but that's one of the cool things about it. So here's a really good question. Thoughts on Aptos? Uh, um, i familiar with the ecosystem, uh, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of But yeah, don't have enough knowledge. 
thoughts on Aptos? So I talked to the Aptos folks at um, at SBC uh, last year in September, and what I remember from that conversation is so many promises that seemed too good to be true. That's what I remember. Have you seen Aptos has been pumping the last two weeks? I have not seen that, but I'm not surprised. I mean, like, pumping is like... Whole market's been doing good. Yeah. How much? 500%. 500%? My God. Well, they did tell me they promised so much, and I don't know. No, no, no. There was talk of it being a Sam coin, but uh, now there's talk of it being a Facebook coin. Facebook coin? Or some sort of Facebook. Uh, Interesting. So in the last uh, 30 days, it is up 281%. In the last 30 days, last 24 hours. Yeah, last 30 days, 281. 90 days, it is up 291. All time, all time since launch, 150% all time. The last 90 days, 291% gain on that. So, so like I recall... I talked to at those people like they, they promised a lot and I made a note like I have to go and get at those because they, because if they do like deliver on what they're promising this is this is amazing technology but I I neglected to follow through deep dive into it yeah 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 so I'm still on the I'm still on the idea of like they promise a lot so I do, I'm not confident yet at all um what's your favorite decks as you take a sip of water. Um, sip of water, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my favorite decks. Um, Stella Swap. Uniswap, of course. Uniswap. I rep Uniswap V3. Hell yeah. What about what about Sushi Swap? Sushi Swap is cool. I mean, like it's a clone, kind of, which is kind of dope. But uh, I like Sushi, sushi X Swap. Sushi X Swap. Yeah, multi chain swap that they have. That's how I get to Arbitrum. That's how you get to arbitrage. Have they? Oh, they. Oh, okay. They have a very simple, yeah, easy. Yeah, swaps too. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. The the fees involved with that. It's a lot cheaper everywhere else, in my opinion. MetaMask swap makes it very easy, very painless. It's very easy. But the fees are a little outrageous. Yeah. My uh, thoughts. That's, that's that's the that's the one drawback. Yeah. Uh, What's your favorite wallet outside of MetaMask? Outside of MetaMask, uh, uh, probably Rainbow Wallet. Rainbow Wallet is pretty awesome. What do you think of Mew? Mew? Uh, My Ether Wallet. My Ether Wallet. Yeah, I think it's good as well. Um, I think any wallet that's on board is something you do want to crypto through the wallet. Um, um, yeah. That's... Are you guys ready for some DGen Alpha? Sure. I got two pieces of Alpha. All right? Go for it. Number one, the next time you're eating tacos. All right? <laughs> if you get two or more tacos... Yeah. Put a taco shell on the bottom, soft shell on the bottom. So when you're eating, all of it falls off, that falls out. Now you have a new taco. You just yield farmed. That's alpha right there. That's alpha. All right. So, no, this is something that I've been really involved with. It's called Zen Token. Yeah. I don't know. Have you heard of Zen? S E N. Where is that? Was it like an NFT drop? No, there's N. There was one of those. So one from the community and stuff like that. Um, but no, Zen, X-E-N, uh, it's on 10 chains. Zen. I, I've heard X-E-N. I don't know about Zen at all, to be honest. So it's on, so one, it doesn't, it, if you can go buy it, yeah. people made liquidity pools, but to get the token, it's proof of participation almost. You're just paying gas fees. So in a way, it's like a salary. Uh, you go and you claim, or well, you mint, I call it claim your mint. Yeah. How long you want to work for? How many days? And then on those, so you, you, your math, the math on your wallet. So basically oh, okay. tied to your wallet. Yeah, yeah. And then on those, that day, you go and you pay the gas fee to mint those tokens into existence. Almost like a salary. Uh -huh. So basically you're paying just gas fees for creation of tokens. But the NFT piece of it is now, and once you do that, you can do multiple wallets at once. You do up to 128 wallets, so VMUs. So you can have 128 wallets working for you within an NFT. So almost like a torrent in a way. Um, but now you have a liquid position. So like you could say like, hey, 
in uh, 400 days, it could be worth this much, but you have a liquid position now. And that's sort of why I like it because one, there is a token that was created out of nothing with no admin keys, no pre mined tokens. Yeah. I sort of like that shit. I'm I not, too, I, yeah. yeah. Do you have any, any, any other tokens like that that you can think of? To find no admin fees, no pre mine is really rare. Um, what was the last one you remember? That's how rare it is. I can't think of a name. It's hard to find. All right. So, yeah, no. And, and it's been hard. I know there's been a few on my head. All right. So then ending question before we move on to next book. You guys have been amazing. One, how does people find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at blockchain underscore. Okay. And how can they find you on Twitter? You can find me, my name Surya Bakshi, S-U-R-Y-A. I'm sure I'm the only Surya that's like has crypto followers. Nice. Okay. So last question. Thoughts on Solana? Um, I think there's a lot of growth going on Solana. I think it's definitely, obviously, been affected by, you know, the FTX debacle. But uh, I have some friends, friends at Solana and some of the nicest guys I know. So, yeah, I think there's definitely, uh, you know, room for growth and room for innovation. All right. Thoughts on Solana? Given their historical problems of, like, just centralization in the past like five years i would say be cautious about solana they are still on beta so i think you would want to get rid of the kinks before you push all of that up. i mean how long can you stay on beta right like two years oh, so far well that's the whole downside of like you know like so um there's one guy on twitter patrick mccord i don't know, if you know who that is i know the name yeah yeah so he talks you know like that you know that a uh, huge aspects of sort of ZK robes, right? Like, like they underestimate the, like, sticky power of optimistic robes that have already deployed, right? So, like, while they're waiting for their ZK robes to be perfect or, like, you know, to be, to be, to be, like, all they can be, you're losing out on that adoption and and, and the stickiness of, of other roll-ups, optimistic roll-ups, is a really strong force. Stickiness is a, is a huge thing. You're, you're right. I, I got you. All right. So as we end every interview, we go with 10 seconds, lightning round, each review, closing words. 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate this uh, conversation. Learned a lot from from from, from you hosting and from, from the other speakers as well. And yeah, go 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 ahead and follow me. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, 10 seconds. Final thoughts. <laughs> My final thoughts. Um, fuck all player twos out of Arbitrum. I got to represent. Um, try to cash out of Av Avalanche if you can. Just because, Ouch. <laughs> Just because why not? Um, I won't say why, but uh, yeah. Hey, GMX, we love you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Fine. Well, I'm, GMX is on Arbitrum. Can't hate GM. Yeah. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. I can't. I can't. Hate. I can't hate. All right. So hey, I want to thank you guys, and as always, we will see you on the flip side, and we're going to talk more tonight before you guys leave. We're going to go find some other people before they leave at Crypto Monday. All right. Yeah. Hello, hello, and we are live. Who do we have here? Uh, Yuri. <laughs> Yuri, how are you doing tonight? Uh, good at Crypto Mondays. Hey, and who do we have? Here? What's going on? What we at? We on, we on Twitter space? What we yeah. on? We're on a Twitter space. We're on Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen, episode number 173. You finally came into the place, which is Crypto Mondays, the biggest crypto meetup in the world. I am Abby Harris. We holding it down today at Sean's Bar. We got some great guests to come through. And if you in the city, every Monday, each and every Monday, pull up the Crypto Monday, 6.30 at 9. We talk about all the tech, Web3 stuff that you can possibly think of. And I'm out. Oh, last thing. Pull up on me Tuesday, A-B-T-R-A-X. This is my Twitter space so at 7 p.m. tomorrow. We'll be there. I will have an interview from Susan Cummins. She's the co-founder of Rockstar Games and 2K Sports. And she has a project called Pediverse, so go check it out. Will I be able to be on stage for that? Uh, I don't know, because i got to figure out her time. And she's in London, so my interview is at 5, but I'm not sure if that's 5 New York time or 5 London. All right, all right. Yuri, we're down to you. 
I think if you wake up in either time zone, you'll be just fine, or just stay awake the whole time. I'm sure you can end up on that one. The spaces. What do you do in this space? Um, I do Twitter spaces. Uh, yeah, on a couple different ecosystems, and I build stuff that educate people within it. This space. Where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, at Stoked on Ice. S T O K E D O N I C E. All right, and I think that the last time I saw you was in Miami. No, no, no. We were in New York, Crypto Monday, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. <laughs> I think you were going to Miami, but yeah. Um, never a dull moment in the space. It feels like it's been years. <laughs> it does. Um, I still feel like I've seen you in like lots of other spaces. I think I think it was um, we were having a discussion about Denver last time. I think that might have been it because uh, I've, I've gone to East Denver and whatnot. But are you going to eat? Are you going to eat Denver now? No, um, I'm busy, but that's a good thing. Okay, of course. Uh, are you going to be going to Paris, Paris Blockchain? Because that's what we were here celebrating a little bit. No, I need to, though. It looks amazing. I just happened to look it up. Have you been before? I was there, there last year. The thing that I don't like about it this year is it's pretty much a month ahead of when it was last year. Oh, yeah, that could change things. I could see that being an issue. Um, yeah, what was it like? I'm very curious after what I saw. So, um, I forget the name of the building, but it was packed. So, um, and there was so much going on that there was a floor I didn't even know about. But the projects were so like boxed together that my only complaint about it, and it seems to be every Web3 event, Wi-Fi sucked. And we were in an old Paris Stone Art Museum. So it was amazing. Um, and then I uh, went to, what else did I go to in Paris last year? Me uh, Metaverse Summit was amazing. Uh, an ECC. Um, got to go to an after party event which turned into a rave at the Louvre. Rave at the Louvre? What were they playing? Don't even remember off the top of my head, but it was it was pretty good. Bunch of DGens. Amazing. I, I'm here for the DGen stuff. I think you are too. What's your favorite chain right now? Uh, I'm so unbiased. I'm just an NFT user at this point. It's pretty bad. Um, I've been big on I know it's considered the nerdiest of nerd, but I've been really big on the ADA. Um, especially as of just the artists that have come through there have been unreal. So on Cardano, um, so uh, who who do I love on Cardano? Uh, Got to do a shout out to our Snap Brilla family, um, James and NT. You know I love you in a weird way, not a normal way, but in a weird way. Um, let's see who else do we got on Cardano? Uh, Clay Nation. Clay Nation is doing pretty cool stuff. Do you have a Clay Nation? Of course. I'm jealous. Did you get it like when it was really, really early? Not cool. Um, yeah, full on Gen bought it super early, um, and even got to stare at Good Charlotte and wonder if any of this would be a thing. Like the the project has nostalgia and awesomeness blended together. I'm pretty stoked. Uh, car dogs. I'm with car. I got car dogs. Um, I even got one of the. Uh, so I was at CNFT. Um, that was an. Were you at CNFT? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to see Were you at Rare Bloom? <laughs> okay. I've been very digital. Um, all right. Hey. Um, so, all right. I'm trying to think of like. So this was my thing on on Cardano CNFT event, and huge shout out to M for putting that on. Um, but originally the emails was like 50 projects signed on, and then like 75 projects signed on, and then like, hey, we have 100 projects signed. I was like, oh, cool. There's going to be 50 projects there. Get there. There was like 150 projects. So my biggest fault on it was that it was only two days. Yeah, it sounds like we need a third day. Do you think more or three days is enough? Three to four. Like a day of talking, like maybe like because of for like the projects and stuff like that and talking day. But at least three days because some of those projects made amazing booths that they, they built themselves. Those team, Like there was this one team. I don't even remember the name of the team, um, but they came up from Brazil. And they built this huge thing. Like they, like they couldn't, like the union wouldn't help them because, like the laws, they couldn't like bring stuff in because of the union. So they had to bring in supplies and build this huge set themselves. And then they had to take it down. <laughs> and they had like two hours to dismantle it. And so, a bunch of devs with hammers. <laughs> it was sort of hilarious. Builders with hammers tearing stuff down. But um, there was so many awesome projects there. Um, great talks. Great music projects. Even. Um, Oh my gosh. I only got to talk to like a third of them. 
you know, because that, that's how it was. Yeah, I'm going with you. Um, so it looks like you got to get going. So I uh, don't want to keep you. I want to thank you for all. Where can people find you on Twitter again? Uh, it's at Stoked on Ice. And then uh, second plug, I'll be on Ab's Twitter space tomorrow. Okay. So yeah. definitely check it out. We will be there. Uh, so then big question for you. As you have to get going, we have to end every space with this. Ten seconds. Words of wisdom. Um, self-custody, not your keys, not your coin. That is the most important part of any of this. So we heard a counterpart to that tonight. Not my keys, not my problem. Sure. I think it just depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah, I agree. I, and I, simply because not your keys, not your crypto. That is our mantra. All right. Uh, I want to thank you. And it is always good to see you. Are you going to be here, you going to be here next week? I should be. Uh, yes, because I'm leaving town on the 15th, 16th, um, then heading to Denver. So Cool. Yeah, I, I think in-person events are some of the most important things in these times by far. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad I chose that I had four events to go through tonight. Um, one was an AI one in Brooklyn. I chose the one that was eight blocks away from home. But also, you know, I was like, Crypto Monday and Paris Blockchain Week. Um, amazing. A station F in Paris, like what they're doing there. France in general, because one of the big things, NFTs on artists and community ideas, are he, the, the state funds it. That's they're like, yeah, we'll give you six months of runway. Let's see, let's see if you sink or swim. Then they give like I think a secondary grant if it's needed. So it's I don't know, more VCs like that here, or more angels, or just funding. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think social good is the best way to encourage any of this being adopted. I, I think it's great. The more we can help, the better. Any any NFT projects people should look at that might be social good or just be cool or rug, maybe a rug pull or maybe not or just something fun? Um, we were talking about music earlier. Um, it's on ETH. Um, there's a project called PRS Fest, and they are offering NFTs for membership and access to artists and kind of checking out some great music. So the proceeds from purchasing that NFT actually go to uh, social good in the island of Puerto Rico just to kind of blend communities together, hopefully, by um, giving out access to technology, especially laptops, so they can afford things like that. Um, geeky and awesome to check out. Where can someone find that on Twitter? Uh, at PRS Fest. Awesome. Hey, thank you. And I will see you Later, on the space yeah, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, All right. Sounds good. All right. We're going to go around and we're going to find the next conversation piece. We've talked. Do you ladies mind being interviewed? Twitter. Thank you. Some of them. But yeah. Okay, then that's perfect for Twitter. Your name is Jane. And you're Sarah. Okay. Sarah, what are you saying? We're talking DGen things. We're talking about blockchain. Okay. What? What? I'm so, not gonna be videoed, right? No. Oh, thank God. We're, okay. Okay. You look wonderful. Yeah, well, I don't. Wanna, yeah. Okay. What am I saying? What, whatever you. Hi. Hi. My name's Taco. Really? But yeah. My name is Player One Taco. As I as I love to say, player my one taco. my my. Did you hear Layer One or Player One? Oh. Player One. So. An, I, player one, I, was thinking, I am I am player one taco, but oh. enough people. I was actually at, at Paris Blockchain Week last year. Oh, you got it. I did. You like it? Can we take a little sidebar there? I love. I okay. loved it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm trying to make sure you're part of the conversation thank online. You. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I've never been to Paris blockchain and I would like to learn more about it. Um, so it was really amazing. I don't remember the name of the building. It was centrally located. Uh, the project I was with accidentally put me in an apartment on the other side of the river. And so it was a very long ride to get to it. But once you were there, I was there all day in the projects, um, a couple projects, huge shout out to Hacken. They took over a, a cafe across the street. So like any part of the day you needed to exit from the mass of people, um, you could go and relax. Meals were free and stuff like that. So huge shout out. I actually do contract work for Hacken. So security audits. Yay. Yeah. So what was the agenda for the event? So there was a ton of uh, booths. Um, there was three side rooms, and then there was upstairs. It was sort of like 
people like sort of went up there but didn't know that they were supposed to because it said VIP, but then that's where other projects were and other lounges were. So they just, I think they were pointing out the VIPs up here, but people thought it was a VIP area. So like some of the projects, the sponsors that were smaller sponsors didn't get as much traffic because down below was jam packed, but there's so much going on. I didn't learn until after it was over that there was a downstairs where all the talks were going on. You know, um, there was one um, talk that was allowed to, to have main stage that turned it was like people like literally found it, figured out it was a rug pull while they were like people like the DJs. They're like, oh, yeah, I want to buy this token. And then they're like, um, yes, yeah, or this and like literally calling it out as a rug pull like on. So it was sort of one of those. There was that piece. I'm not going to talk about that project, but because you can't always do your full due diligence as a provide as a event provider. You know, and who knows, You they might have been said they were going to talk about something else. But it was really amazing. Um, there was a ton of different projects there. Um, it was sort of starting the, the pre-Luna stuff. So there was some good, there was a lot of Luna projects and, and pe projects there that for that piece. Um, but overall, it was amazing. Great people. NFT uh, Paris happened as well. Um, and then uh, it was... It's good vibe. Uh, one of the coolest contacts I got I got to meet was, uh, and that really turned me back to the Hedera ecosystem is Solo Creasy. Uh, he's making a, a galaxy, so like sounds like galaxy but with a C. Um, and it was uh, one of the first ideas of viable ideas of content creators creating social tokens for their project or for their brand and the ownership to be able to reward their fans. So what do you do in Web three? Uh, so I, um, I'm on the uh, TradFi side of the house okay. and trying to help the financial services community understand and adopt web 3o from everything that has to do with the technology to use cases of today and tomorrow. Future proofing within regulation. What do you think with with, with like uh, JP Morgan's Onyx chain? Oh yes, um, I can't comment on that, but I think it is a very good proof of concept for real time settlements. Yeah, no real time settlements, but then also the idea of tokenizing um, stock assets yes. and then over over collateralized loan yeah. protocols pieces on that, and then being able real to. All yeah. of it. Yeah. Democratization of anything. Democratization of anything. It's going to be the democratization of financial services accessibility. What do you believe in? How do you believe, though? Like, you know, I got to talk with someone from Consensus tonight. Very ama amazing person. Um, but, you know, there's always the talk of Infura and like the centralization of proof of stake um, and the consensus model of censorship. Thoughts on that? Um, I don't. Uh, well, and you can. You can. I'm. I'm throwing hot questions. They are hot yeah. topics, but just personal views. Yeah, so I um, I actually struggle with this because um, I, I, um, I'm I kind of a purist at heart. I love the concept of decentralization. I do not like any kind of censorship. And at the same time, there seems to be a need for, quote, regression to the mean of some sort, which as a result leads to some censorship outcome. It's a difficult balance, I think. I know the, um, uh, over the last, I think, three months, there was a censorship. Uh, the, I forget the EIP for approving the censorship modes that OFEC put into place. Um, but uh, it was around 70% of all validators and no, uh, pieces uh, conforming to that. And today, it's around 60%, so less. We're talking to Jane now. No, I'm Jane. Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Two amazing women of Web3, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, the community has uh, been waking up that you know, there are gatekeepers. I mean, they do act as bridges because without consensus and some of these no providers or infrastructure providers, you won't get mass adoption. But then in, in the same token, they will become bigger and they do pose a threat if they change their, you know, terms of service again and privacy and like conform to old facts. So, yeah, people will just need to find 
you know, enough alternatives to that. But right now, just given the dependence, like everything at some point will be centralized because people would always value, you know, economies of scale and convenience. But if you as a community make sure that there is enough alternatives or people thinking about other other ways, whether you change the consensus mechanism or you know, find a way to bypass whether whether it's censorship from the government or from the technocrats, yeah, it will be useful. As long as people realize there's these issues, the forty percent of people really, you know, they got it. So then an idea piece that's on that that, that I just learned about today is that Russia is going to be coming out with its own DeFi protocol, I, like Serb something, uh, and it's coming out on Ethereum. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things to, you know, like, will that will that include more censorship or will that consider, move people to different chains and layer twos that provide, you know, different solutions? I, I'd have to think about that. I don't know yet. How do you trace something yeah. is Russian if it's already on Ethereum? Do you have a whole whitelist, oh, yeah, blacklisted yeah, yeah. list of all the Russians? If they just put on a pseudonymous ID and just try to launder it, it's like back to the same point of censorship. Like there are so many on chain forensic and like tracking tools, but unless you really exhaust all the possibilities, you can't prevent that. So I, I, you know, yeah, one I of the, that was the whole thing that wasn't, isn't there like some tweet from Vitalik talking about the fact that there's a little bit of centralization to ETH, like, oh, right? yeah. so if it's With being it's, built on that, that's kind of interesting, right? Because it's not completely decentralized. And that makes you wonder, like, what are their thoughts? Because they're not dumb, but are they trying to just prove a system is broken or are they trying to break a system or are they trying to prove a point? that if it's supposed to be decentralized and open, are they trying to make a proof case that no one, that certain people just based on where they live shouldn't be on blockchain? I don't know. I have no answer to that. And, it, and, and you, you literally you can pass like these, this, this is, this is the hot, these are hot questions that I'm literally coming up with on the spot because I like this. I like the way this conversation is going. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they necessarily have an intention. Like, if you really want to open a decentralized system, there will be bad actors. You just need to have a mechanism where people, through consensus, can find out, kind of like, you know, zero knowledge proof or something like that, where, you know, if one person finds out something is wrong, they can stop it or dispute it. If you put in certain, like, error check, fact check, or some sort of way to make it better and have whether through a fork or some ways if you go down the wrong path can self-correct as a community yeah i think there's like yeah i mean however many russians on the system i think there's always a way to you know, make sure it goes down the path it's intended yeah but it's it's difficult I think. yeah well because i well, i'm pulling remembering from it is they're trying to move a, a banking system on onto these so like it would be Oh, is is it is the idea of it being a DeFi protocol, or is it Russia's own version of a CBDC? You know, I didn't even get to read the article. It was literally something that was like being talked about, and I was like, "Oh, okay, cool. I got to read more about that." So, um, yeah. Well, considering what's happening, it's very much a defensive move, I would guess, right? So, um, you know, it's. Uh, there's no fortunate outcome on any of what's going on, um, but there are, history will prove, innovations that come out of it, right? So this might be an example of that. It's accelerated the focus on that from them, apparently, right? Because of everything that's happening. Because right now they're so dependent on swift networks and everything else. This is a way to decouple. So I guess the deglobalization networking is happening on all levels. Um, and yeah, no, it's, it's one of those deep dives that you wonder at, at a government level, is it a lot, not allowable, um, or should it be found upon, but at a people level, having control of one's own finances actually sort of gives them that chance to step away from governmental control. And is that was what's needed me personally, this is my opinion is that like, 
I think uh, during the Cold War, we did one of the best things. We just sort of sh showered capitalism love, you know, and like basically, you know, tried to push it. And I, I think by shunning and like barricading and embargoing, we could have done one of the worst things, not only like to the Russian to the Russian people, because like, do you think Oliarts or any politician or any person of affluence is going without their Nikes or McDonald's, you know? And, I, you know, huge people had a huge problem. You know, they wanted to shout praises for like Nike and um, Adidas and McDonald's uh, pulling out. Well, McDonald's couldn't serve food to people because no one could pay with credit card. And Nike couldn't had a better ROI pulling out because they couldn't accept credit card payments anymore. And they saw they would get. But then like everyone sort of shit on. Um, I always say their name wrong. Nestle. Nestle. Nestle? Nestle. Yeah, because they have 100, like you think of just cookie and tea and hot chocolate, but they have 150 brands that are cosmetics, yeah. women yeah. products, men products, you know, hygiene items, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, and so it's, this is my personal view, like you can dislike what a government's doing, but you can't shit on people that really don't have that choice. That's the age old um, question, and I don't think that uh, these kind of barriers like economic I don't think they ever really work yeah I don't think yeah I don't think they, yeah embargoes I don't know if they've ever worked have they helped have they ever stopped the government or hurt the people how do you think Cuba did Cuba, yeah I mean it's, it's hard because again I've been reading the same thing right where these embargoes are not necessarily impacting but then they might be impacting the people and then actually I think they're having one of their best years because of all the oil reserves that they have they're able to really um, oil and gas. Yeah, I mean they own all of that, so they're making a lot. It's not of like money. they don't have anyone that's not buying. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, this might. This is probably going to take be taken out of context by someone, and I apologize in advance. Embargoes suck. I think one of the weird perks or one of the weird outcomes that happened with Cuba's embargo was the automobile industry. How many cars of history are still in Cuba because they couldn't get new ones? So they had to work and learn how to work engines and it turned whole generations into like car builders and rebuilding like these cars from the 40s and 50s that lasted until the 90s and beyond. And I just, innovation, I think, came out of that. And so, you know, I just thought that that was one of the like weird, you know, like, Okay, if a cave is sealed off forever and you open it up and you got like lizards that can't see and now you're like showing them light and they all die, it's sort of weird. But, you know, it's like when you get to see that microscope piece, um, it's sort of sort of cool. So what's your favorite chain right now? Hmm. Which one should I say? I mean, I have to say with uh, Bitcoin, yeah. I, I, well, and this whole NFT thing is quite interesting. I don't know how long that's going to last. I've, I've heard of this yeah, today. Um, I've thought of this before. And, oh, sorry. Um, and so then the question is, obviously, they're not being stored on chain. Um, and this is almost like... Uh, is like it a Ethereum, v obviously. Is this like a is this a V chain thing where they're being transacted and and what's the I don't know anything other than like Bitcoin NFTs an NFT of what a Bitcoin I can my paper wallet transaction I can throw away yeah so you can um, you can store it okay yeah um, the entire thing I think that's the thing that's so interesting I, about it I think I've had a beef with someone that I want to squash Matt Lockyer. I apologize, Matt, if I'm saying your last name last name wrong. Um, L O C K Y E R. Um, you and me have had some beef, and that is why I've been turned away from like the near community for a while. But I just recently read about your not E R C or your E I P uh, nine nine eight and uh, nesting multiple tokens within an NFT. And I want to say, I want to squash our beef. So I'll see you in East Denver. And yeah, so I hope you're doing well. But uh, so you, you made me nesting tokens. Like it's, a, it's, it's an idea because I've always seen NFTs as a box or a shadow box. We just happen to put 
PFPs or like, I, as I like to say, peepees in them because <laughs> profile pictures. Yeah. Or audio clips. Audio clips. Do you, do you actually know what the first NFT created was? What it was called? What it was? And who made it? No, but you're going to tell me. Well, do you? Nope. It was a video clip. McCoy's wife. Kevin McCoy. Kevin, I think your first name is Kevin. But if McCoy. But do, can you guess? Something on this name just happened in Miami. It used to be the North American Bitcoin Conference. And renamed to something else. And I was just there. And it was a man... And it was amazing. And what that connection is to the name of the name of the first NFT. No, say. No, I... <laughs> it's called Quantum. Oh, interesting. Okay. Boom. I love it. Can we take a break now? Of course we can. And as we're going to do this, we're going to do our last final 10 seconds with each person on the hot seat yeah. with their final question of the night. Before we end tonight, 10 seconds, words of wisdom. Do your own research. Amazing. That's good. Ten seconds. All that glitters is not cold. <laughs> and as we end every night, I'm going to end with mine. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and sharing the space and joining and listening in. Uh, closed mouth cannot be fed and you cannot feed a closed mouth. Those are my words of wisdom for tonight. And as we end every, every space, uh, are you ready for the best knock-knock joke ever? Sarah, Jane, Jane. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mm -hmm.